No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Teske, your host for Good News Today, and I want to thank you for joining us. We've got a great lineup, and here's what's coming up. We'll begin with our devotional time, as we always do, and that consists of our scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of that scripture. Today, we'll be back in the Old Testament looking at the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verses 2 through 5, where the Israelites are given the commandment to celebrate the Sabbath year. It's an interesting passage, so get out your Bibles, turn to Leviticus 25, and I'll meet you there in just a moment. Right now, you should be open up to Leviticus chapter 25, so we can read together. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. What grows of its own accord of your harvest you shall reap, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is a year of rest for the land." Here in Leviticus chapter 25, we've read a part of the Old Testament where the law was being given to the Israelites. Now, there was approximately 613 laws that they were commanded to obey, not just the Ten Commandments as some have erroneously believed. And this was one of the Sabbaths that they were required to keep. You see, they had the weekly Sabbath. We read about that in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. That was part of the Ten Commandments. Then we have the Sabbath year, which is our text that we read here. Uh, and there was a special Sabbath called the year of Jubilee, and that would be a 50th year, and that's later in this chapter of Leviticus chapter 25. So during this Sabbath year, the Israelites were told not to work their fields, and anything that happened to grow in the fields was to be common property of everybody. It didn't belong to one owner or the other. It was common property for anybody. 
Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 1 through 6, also tells us that during this Sabbath year, everybody was to be released of any debts, so the poor would have a time of resetting their debts. But when we look at the people who own property, this Sabbath year was the equivalent of saying, okay, you need to take a year off without pay. That would have been a lot to ask of somebody. It would have been a, a big leap of faith on their part. But you see, the Israelites had seen this from God before. Uh, Exodus chapter 16, where God was giving them the manna from heaven. He provided it every day, and on the sixth day, He provided them twice as much so that they would have enough to eat and they could store it overnight for the Sabbath day. And that miracle continued on and lasted for 40 years. And it's during that period of time when God is giving them that object lesson that our text in Leviticus 25 uh, is given to them. So they had this miracle continually God providing for them. Yet they still complained about the manna. We read about that in Numbers chapter 11. It's so easy for us to look back at those people and and see their failures and their shortcomings. We condemn their behavior, and rightfully so. But we need to examine ourselves and see if we're doing any better than they were. You see, they should have known better. Uh, They had those miracles. They had the things that God provided for them. And, and, And we can all agree on that. But rather than just wagging our finger at them, we need to look at ourselves. Now today, God doesn't expect us to take every seventh year off without pay, but rather He's given us these things for our learning that we might learn the lessons. Romans 15 verse 4. So when Jesus says, such as in Matthew 6, 25 and following, don't worry about your needs. The same God that promised Israel this, that He would take care of them during the Sabbath year, is the one who promises us He's going to take care of us. Do you follow it? Or do you worry? Do you seek first the kingdom of God? Or do you think first about material things? When you pray to God, do you ask in faith without doubting, James 1 verse 6? Do you fully expect that God's going to hear the prayer of His faithful child, James 5 verse 16? Do you pray consistently, 1 Thessalonians 5 17? Do you pray, Thy will be done, not mine, Mark chapter 14 verse 36? You see, there's so many things that we need to just obey what God said, just like those people. We need to learn these same lessons ourselves and not blow them off and say, oh, they were just bad people. Do you trust God's instructions for how to be saved, or do you do what feels right to you? I encourage you to do this. Read through the book of Acts. See what they did to be saved. If it helps you, make a chart and fill it in. Everything that they did. And realize if you do what they did, you become what they became. That's not me telling you what to do. It's letting God tell you what to do. Do you trust Him or do you rebel against Him? You see, He wants you to be saved and He's provided the plan. You have a chance to obey Him and be saved. And that's good news for us today.